，阅读、科技、旅行，生活可以很大。对话、设计、学习、思考不嫌太多。这里是 iTunes 获奖播客《狗熊有话说》，一听就停不下来的哦。Hello， 大家好，欢迎来到独立知识型脱口秀《狗熊有话说》（Bear Talk）， 我是大狗熊。那么今天我们又有一位来自于啊、呃、地球另一端的嘉宾，一位专家和他带来的一本书。那么会在《狗熊有话说》这期节目里面呢，和大家分享关于用户体验设计的一个专业领域的一些知识。OK，Hello、okay, everyone， 嗯、um,。Here's another new episode of Bear Talk, and I'm Bear.、Uh, today I have another guest from the other side of the world, and、uh, join us to share his story and insights about technology and also about user experience design. So、um, I'm proudly introduce you,、uh, Will Grant. The UX and UI expert from the other side of the world. Hello, Will. Hey, hi, Bear. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. I'm,、okay. I'm doing well.、Mm. So,、uh, so Will, uh, um, so for for the other guys, uh, uh, doesn't know much about Will. And、uh, the first I found Will's book. Uh, a few weeks ago, and finished reading it, which is quite、uh, inspiring and、um, uh, quite useful for my design improvement. So, uh, so uh, this is a very、um, good chance that the author himself could could be talk and discuss with with me about、uh, with, about his his own book. So it's quite a privilege for me. So and also for for everyone here, and and will、uh, could you could you introduce more about yourself?、Um, yeah,、uh, about、uh, yeah. about who you are and、uh, what you do and yeah things like that. Yeah,、mm. of course. Thanks, Bear. So,、um, well, thanks for saying such kind words about the book.、Um, yeah, it, it's taken me it took me over a year to to write the book and, and put it all together. So、mm -hmm. it's just really nice that. People are enjoying it and hearing some nice things back from people, so that's that's really great.、Mm. Um, so I, I do UX, which is user experience design. Yeah.、Um, and I think my route into it was、um, quite different to some people. I think a lot of people start with a more traditional design background and they move into doing UX for the web and mobile. But but it's it's all I've ever done really. I, I don't really have the、um, The more sort of artistic side of things. I don't really. I'm not a particularly good illustrator, for example. I'm not, you know, I'm not that strong on the kind of art side of it.、Mm -hmm. um, so my background is more to do with、um, research and testing and and trying to understand how people use computers. Yep.、Um, yeah. So I, I started out、um, building websites. Um, in my parents' house, you know, in my, in my teenage bedroom、mm -hmm. um, on a On a computer,、um, so sort of fifteen, sixteen, building building projects for people, projects for people,、mm. and、um, it was always more about the way it worked to me. It was always more about you know making it usable and making it fast and clear and simple and those kinds of things.、Um, probably because I wasn't a very good visual designer, I guess. <laughs> and then, um, Come on. And then I ended up. <laughs> yeah, yeah.、Um, I ended up going to university、um, and studying、um, interaction design and usability and those kinds of things. But it wasn't really called UX then.、Um, mm. It was called Human Computer Interaction,、uh, mm. or HCI. Yeah. So、uh, HCI was the big was the big thing at the time, and it only really became known as UX、um, later on.、Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I just I just really fell in love with it then. I, I really liked the idea of Thinking through how you build things and making them as simple as possible. Yeah. So, so when did you、uh, just took this career? It's this must be a long time ago. Yeah.、Um, so, I think it's over twenty years ago now. Wow.、Um, wow. 
yeah, so I've, I've been I've been doing this sort of solidly for about twenty years. Yeah. Um, in in jobs, you know, working for people and working for companies, but also on my own uh, as a freelance person or a contractor, mm-hmm. um, and also uh, building some startups as well. Um, started a couple of different companies, and um, one went really well, um, and I think the other two went really badly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's yeah. kind of. That's how startups go, isn't it? You know, you, you do learn, you learn a lot from things that go wrong, I guess. Yeah. So twenty years ago, that must be over one thousand, ten、uh, thousand hours. So yeah, yeah, you th- the ten thousand hours thing. Yeah, I think that's really true, and I think, yeah, I think there's something in that.、Um, you have just got to do things for a long time to get good at them. Yeah. So, yeah.、Uh, Chris, now.、Um, Uh, I, f- I found that UX design—it used to be a really rare wor- world、uh, a few years ago. Like、uh, when I uh, also, uh, as a designer, a few years ago,、uh, uh, just involved about some、um, uh, interaction design. Like、um, you've, yeah, you've dropped out there. Oh yeah, is that is that clear now? Is that okay now? I can hear you again now. Yes, yeah, carry on.、Okay. Okay, that's all right. So,、uh, I found UX design. It's kind of like a hot, hot word、uh, these days. Of course, it used to be quite hard to understand, uh, uh, hard to、uh, explain what I did a few years ago when I、uh, be involved、uh, in some app、uh, app development,、uh, app design、yeah. uh, about some、uh, user interface and also.、Uh, Uh, interaction design, and I found it's quite hard to 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 explain to other people what I did for for living as a designer. When I said I'm a de- I was a designer, they also they always think graphic designer or or kind of like、um, maybe a, a interior designer or something like that. But actually, it's about、right. yeah about it's about digital, and it's、uh, now I realize it's more more and more about. Human、uh, psychology and human behavior, so it's it's much、uh, deeper than just visual. So、uh, could you could you、uh, explain with some、um, with some simple words <laughs> to to our to our audience to、uh, to to the people who li- who are listening? What what is user experience design? How how do you define it? In, in, yeah.、Uh, from from an ordinary user's perspective. Okay. So, to define、uh, user experience is is really hard because I think it's changed a lot over the years. But I'll tell you what what I think it is, and and that's so. For example,、um, when you walk up to a door、um, in a shopping center or in an office,、mm-hmm. you, you look at that door. And your brain makes a whole load of different judgments in a, in a few hundred、uh, milliseconds. Your brain looks at the door, tries to work out whether there's a handle, whether you should pull it or push it, or whether it's an automatic door, or, or those kinds of things. And,、uh, and and somebody's had to design that. So somebody's had to design that door and work out how to make it usable. And if you apply those principles across to software, then and, and software products. That's kind of what user experience is. So, when I when I open this product, when I open this app on my phone or this piece of desktop software, how do I understand how to use it? What's the what's the mental model of actually using this product?、Mm-hmm. Um, but but it's but I guess it's broader than that. I mean, some people define define it right right through to the whole experience of using a company, for example.、Mm-hmm. So, in the example of an airline, it would be The app where you book your flight, but the user experience would also be queuing up for the plane and finding your seat and looking at the in-flight entertainment, all those things.、Mm-hmm. So it can be quite a broad definition,、um, and I don't think that's helpful sometimes. I mean, when I've been looking for roles, you know, either as a freelancer or a contractor, you do see a lot of UX roles, UX jobs advertised. They're just not UX at all. You know, they're they're very much about aesthetic design or、mm-hmm. you know front end development even sometimes. And yeah, it's come to it's, it's become to be a very broad term that means a lot of things. And 
quite yeah. it's quite confusing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I found it's really blur the the definition sometimes. Yes. And um, like uh, if you search some uh, job descriptions about user user uh, UX design, it's also sometimes just 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 will feel uh, this this guy can do everything. You know, yeah. <laughs> they can can design product from from scratch and can talk to 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 user and so so it's like um, I think it's it's need. Uh, a long, longer time to to kill the uh, the the the, bu- the boundary from yeah. uh, from like uh, user research, uh, user strategy, or uh, visual design, user uh, uh, UX uh, UX visual design. So it's it's kind of like uh, um, uh, I don't I don't know how to describe that. It's uh, but it's also could be a good opportunity for. Uh, for uh, for someone would like to do something more involved with technology and the connection with technology and human, so yeah, yeah. So, yeah I think you're right. Mm. I think I think it is changing, and um, no, I think it, I think it'd be good to um, it, like, like you say, it's kind of an opportunity for us as UX people to define what that is. I think. Yeah. 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 That's right. And uh, uh, I also found that you have a lot of um, experience on uh, startup projects. So yeah, yeah. Could you uh, could you say something uh, about that, uh, Chris? I found um, you co-founded a mobile payments startup. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so this was <clears throat> we had a lot of fun doing this. This was great. So mm. um, this was about 2011. Yeah, 2011. Hmm. Um, and at that time, um, Apple Pay didn't exist or, yeah. or Android Pay. Um, people, you know, they had to swipe their card and sign a signature in a, in a store to pay for something. Mm-hmm. Um, and we built this product that let people pay with their phones. Mm. Wow. So um, you would add your card to, to your to this app on, on your phone, and you could go and use it in stores. And we had about a thousand uh, stores across London that you could use it in. Wow. Um, we raised investment and we grew the team and it was just a really crazy time and we had a lot of fun and we had a lot of happy users, you know, we built a thing that people really like to use um, wow. and I, I definitely learned a lot about, about user experience, it was, it was good. Mm. Um, but, but ultimately it was just the wrong time, you know, the, the timing wasn't right and we, we, were, um, yeah, we were put out of business really, yeah. Too early. So, think, yeah. yeah, too early. Um, contactless cards came along. so. In the UK, you can you can pay by just tapping tapping your card onto a little reader. Mm-hmm. Um, that came along. Uh, obviously, Apple Pay and Android Pay came along, and those guys just you know they, they made our app um, irrelevant. Really, there was just no just no need for our product anymore. And um, yeah, it's, it was a shame. You know, we we built something really good, and it just kind of it kind of taught me that a lot of it's luck as well. You know, mm-hmm. you need you need luck when you're building a company too. And, <laughs> Yeah, we just got the timing wrong. Mm. But you definitely learned a lot and some really oh, yeah. uh, valuable, you know, experience during the practical uh, this practical case, and yeah. also collect a lot of uh, a lot of data uh, about user users' behavior or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, and, and did a lot of testing. You know, I, I, I love getting out and uh, and working with people. Um, so user testing is one of my favorite things to do. So actually getting out into stores and watching people try to use our product. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's so much fun. And I, I still do that today. I still do a lot of user testing out in the field with, with real mm. people because it's so valuable. Mm. Yeah. And um, and also, uh, Chris, it's probably another topic, but uh, I uh, uh, you mentioned a user's mental model uh, before mm-hmm. uh, uh, a few minutes ago when we uh, we talk about uh, general what is UX design and I'm really curious about that because uh, as my, my background is more related to to visual uh, a few years ago and uh, when I started to learn UX uh, I found it's more related to humans uh, you know psychology and yeah uh, yeah so could you explain more about uh, yeah. something about a uh, mental model? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so a mental model is 
um, a, a picture inside your head that you that you have when you use a product. So you, you don't really consciously do this. It's something that just sort of happens in, inside your brain. Mm -hmm. um, a great example would be the way that messaging works on phones. Mm. So people understand that when you open a messaging app, um, like a, a, an email app or, or, or WhatsApp, you mm -hmm. have a series of conversations. Yeah. Um, and inside those conversations are the messages between the two people. And it's a very simple model, but it just helps people understand um, how that system works. So for example, when you open WhatsApp, the, you wouldn't see a new message button, you wouldn't see a write a new message button, because pe people would know that, well, at this stage of the product, it doesn't know who I want to talk to, it doesn't know what conversation I'm in. Mm -hmm. So naturally, when you tap a conversation and you go down into an actual chat, mm -hmm. then at the bottom of the view is that you know field to type in your message and, and hit send. And it, just little things like that, it, it sounds like a very simple example, but lots and lots of these little mental models get built by people in their minds, and um, they're essential for the way that we navigate our lives and our products. We, we have to sort of build these models, and a, a big mistake you can make as a UX person is assuming that people understand this model, because a lot of the time they, they don't, you know, they, they yeah. don't really understand the same things that we do, because we designed the product, right? You, yeah. people, like, people like you and me, we, we actually built the product, so of course we know it, but someone coming to it fresh might not understand that at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's our job to kind of keep those models consistent, you know, yeah. don't, don't put that messaging button in a weird place, put, put it where, where it's consistent with, with the model. I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's um, that reminds me that at first when uh, iPhone, the first generation of iPhone, uh, released uh, about yeah. ten, about ten, ten, more than ten years ago. So nobody real, uh, nobody know how to use a full glass uh, sense uh, touchable screen, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, so at the first uh, dial dial uh, dial dial uh, interface. Is related to our uh, uh, the real, the real, uh, real products, the real objects yeah. in, in our real real world. So make yeah. connection with each other. Yeah. So uh, make make us make user uh, easy to understand or or yeah uh, to to get used to to all the uh, all the functions. So it so so uh, in this uh, in this uh, psychology. Uh, jung, jungling, uh, jungling. It's like uh, create a mental, mental model uh, in, yeah. in users' minds. Is that is that? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a really good example too. Mm. Bear, I think you, I think you're right, and I think people just weren't used to, um, you know, a, t a touch screen phone. It was it was mind blowing at the time. So yeah, people had to have these little these little hints and these cues so they so they understood the model. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So, uh, so it's really uh, it reminds me two questions. Uh, reveals two questions. One is I found uh, in your book. Uh, it, it seems you you really don't like flat flat design. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, you, you, you even use some extreme word like I hate flat design or, or something <laughs> like that in, yeah. in the book. Well, so, I, so is that? I mean. Uh, yeah, is that the reason? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do, uh, I do really dislike it. Um, mm. I mean, I, I dislike it not from an aesthetic point of view because I think it looks very clean. You know, mm -hmm. it, it does look very minimal and clean. And I think, yeah, yeah, it, it looks nice, but it's just very hard for people to use. <laughs> That's mm. the problem. And, yeah. Um, I, I think we've got to we've got to try and be objective as well and. And think about other people. So we all work in the tech industry, right? So we're, mm -hmm. we're using products all the time. And I've done user testing with, you know, I, I don't mean this in a, in a in a rude way, but normal people, mm -hmm. people like people who are not <laughs> like us, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you do user testing with with normal people, you'd be so surprised at how little they understand about the, again again these mental models. And mm. I, I'm looking at the Skype. I'm looking at the Skype user interface while we do this interview, and mm -hmm. it's just really not clear what what things can be clicked and what things can't be clicked. You know, it's mm. it's full of these hidden flat design creates all these hidden interactions, and somebody's 
mo- somebody's mother or grandmother or someone who's you know maybe doesn't use computers much. Yeah. They're just not. They're just not going to understand mm. what where these buttons are or, or what they do. And you know, I, I do think there's a balance. I think you know, going the other way, as you just talked about with with the original iPhone, it, it was crazy. It was too far in the other direction. But yeah. to to make things so obscure and so hidden, it just it just feels like you know. And, and I've watched people struggle with this. You know, I've mm. watched countless people in user tests. Yeah. Just stare, staring at these flat design interfaces and just not <laughs> understanding at all what where anything is. Ah, uh, those poor users. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I feel for them. That's. I sort of feel like it's our job as UX people to try and give these people a, a hint. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, it, uh, it's it's also um, you know when I when I read uh, you said you you don't like flat design at my first my first impulse is. Uh, I think it, it's good because uh, it's very clear and uh, simple to understand and um, uh, easy for for the workflow. Because of course, um, yeah. course uh, I, I remembered um, as a app developing team, uh, we used to struggle with uh, pixel to pixel design. Uh, right. Yeah, a few years ago. But later, when iPhone uh, have different Different resolutions. It's it becomes it's become became a nightmare for 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 the design workflow. So everything mm. need to be with multiple uh, uh, display. But then uh, after the flat design and uh, everyone get get used to it for a while, and then uh, it's it's easier to to design. Of uh, uh, course, uh, it's make it faster. But uh, after that, I, I uh, just. Take a take my hat, take my take my uh, user's hat, and then uh, and, mm-hmm. and I think yeah, that's probably uh, could be a big problem for some someone who doesn't uh, use uh, technology uh, products frequently. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it could be could be very hard for 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 elders for um, for our grandmas. That's uh, yeah. yeah. That could be a problem, and also, so, you know, like WeChat, uh, like the the other uh, the the, uh, the like the most popular um, uh, IM uh, app in China, and also yeah. quite 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 popular all over the world. So the, their first version, uh, they have a very clear goal: is to uh, to allow everyone in China, no matter uh, uh, how old they are, they. They are capable to use uh, voice to to uh, to uh, to uh, con- contact with each other. So, which I think could be uh, yeah, it could change the change the if you uh, if we can change the perspective, it could be uh, could be different. And uh, I realized now I realized yeah, probably flat design could be quite good for for um, users. Like uh, uh, like involved in technology and yeah. uh, and also uh, some some uh, early adapters, so it could be mm. quite good for them. But it's not good for for everyone. Yeah, I think that's so yeah. That's, so that's something that's something you said then, Bear. I never even considered. That's really interesting about how it used to be hard to do the pixel perfect designs, and then. Retina came out, and then all the different iPhone, uh, all the different Android, uh, like DPI yeah, yeah. levels. Yeah, so flat design, yeah, it kind of solves that, doesn't it? I, I never mm. considered that that was the reason behind it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Mm. And also, uh, you, uh, when you said you, you feel sorry about uh, those people who, who cannot understand <laughs> them, uh, it's also uh, found. Uh, do you think uh, maybe? Uh, a very important quality for for a designer is uh, is care about their user. It's like empathy. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, so. H- how important do you think is that? Because um, because I, I also uh, I used to think things about about uh, how beautiful it is, and so mm. uh, so sometimes just uh, give up the uh, the speed or even or even the the. Yeah, the the usability for for that, but uh, but I, I found if you uh, f- uh, 
if you just think with from a user's perspective, probably uh, take care of them and uh, uh, empathy could be could be much important than that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How do you think about that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think empathy is the, the number one thing you need as a as wow. a UX designer. Yeah, wow. yeah. For sure. And I think. I, I, I do. I really like the field of UX because I think anyone can get into it. Mm-hmm. I think it's a very accessible career that people can move into if they're if they're interested in doing that. And you know, you, you can learn a lot of the other skills, right? So mm-hmm. you can learn how to do wireframes. You can learn how to um, conduct user tests. Those sorts of things. And I think the only kind of talent sort of innate that you need to have is empathy. You know, that's that's the most important thing. And being able to put yourself in the position of other people mm-hmm. um, it, it is vital, and, and often it's always often it's people in sort of strange situations as well. Because I mean, we've talked a lot in this chat so far about consumer software that's used by regular people, mm-hmm. but there's a whole world out there of, of business software, and yeah. you know, really quite boring B two B business software that still has you know hundreds of millions of users. Um, and is often designed quite badly, and I think a lot, a lot of the work that I've done over the years, it's not very exciting, but it's mm-hmm. it, it's, it's important work, and that's trying to make those bits of software easier for people to use. And I think you need to have empathy with their job. You know, they might be in a call center mm-hmm. processing car insurance claims, for example. Yeah. Um, and the software they have to use is sometimes pretty bad, and. They have to use yeah, it all day. Yeah, yeah and they got to, they've wow. got to use it all day. Exactly, and you know, building some empathy with those people is is vital, really, really vital to to, to making those experiences mm. better. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's um, yeah, that's a very good point because um, uh, uh, we are as a designer sometimes we are always thinking about uh, commercial uh, customers, but yeah. sometimes about business is is another field and. Uh, yeah, it's also about humans. So about people are using yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. this reminds me a lot. And uh, speaking of empathy, um, uh, another question, another problem I, I I found could be very hard to deal is how to balance. Um, like as a designer, um, what's uh, you, you you like more people use your products. And maybe uh, for uh, the longer the better is, mm. uh, but also you would like to the, uh, you would mm. like them just to to solve their problem and then just uh, they they are happy and you are happy. But uh, yeah. uh, in, in in the real world, you you uh, you maybe want to uh, uh, the more people use uh, your products. Uh, the longer, the better. So how ha- how to balance this? It's like yeah. something good and something something uh, valuable, or something something evil, or how ha- how to yeah. balance it? I, I find this is quite hard. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. And so, so in, in any organization, like you say, there's going to be that that tension between sort of sales and marketing people who. Want to keep people in the product as long as possible and sell them the most stuff, and then uh, you know us guys who are champions of the user, and we're trying to say, well, let's make things easy for them, let's get them through the journey as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I think I sort of think two things about this. So the, the first thing I think is it, it's our job as UX people to be that voice of the user mm-hmm. and, and make that make that case, make that argument inside the organisation because. And, and we're not going to win every battle, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes marketing will get their way, and there'll be a pop up collecting their email address, you know. <laughs> that'll that'll yeah. happen. And but we still need to be that voice, don't we? We still need to actually make that case and say, well, this is going to make users happier. Mm-hmm. So I think I think part of it's about that sort of standing your ground and, and fighting that corner, and yeah. knowing that you're not always going to win, and and that's fine, you know. As long as you you tried, that's that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the point number two, I would say, is the sort of the evidence really is that products that get people through that journey faster do typically win, right? So mm. if you look at search, Yahoo and AltaVista and those kind of search engines were 
huge. They were the global leaders, and, and their home pages were just caked full of just rubbish, you know, ads and news stories and clickbait. And then Google came along with one search box and relevant results, and yeah. everyone switched to Google. Um, MySpace became clogged up with ads and you know all kinds of crap, and then Facebook came along, which was just simple and uncluttered and. You know, I feel like we sort of we forget these lessons. These these companies get really big because they provide a better experience, and then over the years that experience gets sort of eroded away, doesn't it?、Mm, yeah. I mean, like、point. Instagram. So everyone loved Instagram when it came out because it was so simple. It was post a picture and see a feed of pictures. That was it. Yeah. And now we've got stories and、um, filters and. You know, ads that appear in your timeline it just becomes this big cluttered mess. So, yeah, I don't know.、Uh, people vote. People will vote with their feet, won't they? As they say, and they'll they'll go to the next thing that that isn't cluttered. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's、um, for a longer, a long term perspective. It's always the the faster and take care of users、uh, will、yeah. will will be the final winner. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so.、Mm. And、uh, you also mentioned、uh, to fight with with marketing guy or yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So how how,、uh, how to work with other guys in the team? Like、uh, how to work with marketing guy or managers、mm. or clients? Because you you have some、uh, practical, you have some uh, uh, experience on、uh, on some real projects. So、mm. uh, h- uh, h- how do you think how to work with other guys? Well, I mean that's that's a really good question. I, I think I've spent a lot of time getting this wrong. I think you know. I think I've learned a lot about this because it's it's not just about you being a good designer. Okay, it's、mm-hmm. you, you also have to be a good salesperson as well, and you have to convince people. And、uh, the, probably the the main thing I've learned in this area is that you can't over communicate with people. You know, you've got to keep telling people. It's sometimes the same thing, you know,、mm. multiple times、mm. to get people to kind of to buy into your idea. Because you know,、mm. if you're trying to make a change inside an organisation,、mm. you're trying to improve a product. There are going to be a lot of people who just want it kept the same way, and it's not good enough. You know, I used to think it was good enough to say, "Okay, here's a better design. I'm right. Let's go and build it."、Mm-hmm. But but that doesn't really work. You know, you have to actually go and put the effort in to convince people.、Hmm. You've got to sit with marketing, sit with sales, sit with management, and actually demonstrate to them your thinking and why this, why your solution is better.、Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of designers don't get that. I think they don't understand that. You know, fifty percent of it is convincing people. Fifty、yeah. percent is being a designer, but the other fifty percent is. Trying to sell people that your idea is the right one to to do, and yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I realised that for、yeah. years. You know, it took me a long time to get to that point, and、um, yeah, that's really important because otherwise you're never going to get anything done. You know, you're going to hit roadblocks all the time. Yeah, yeah, that, that's、um, yeah, that's quite. Also, I, I'm facing the, the the same problem on、um, communication. So I found、uh, yeah. it's it's much more important than I thought. Uh, as a designer, it's like、uh, you you almost spend at least yeah a half of your time and energy to to talk or to 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 make other people understand what you are trying to do and yeah communication is quite is quite is very important and yeah, yeah. and it's also、uh, it's also like uh, uh, like English is not not my native language so it's it's、uh, a little bit Harder than than that, yeah. Uh, so uh, to talk in English, to 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 communicate with other people. So yeah, I'm trying to to improve this at the same time. Well,、so、I I, I think your English is great, Bear. I think it must <laughs> Thank be. Thank you very much. I、yeah. mean, you'd be totally totally fine to be understandable in you know English speaking countries. Okay. How how do you get on in New Zealand? Is it? I'm asking you a question now.、Uh, uh, what's what's it like working in New Zealand? Uh yeah yeah it's like uh. Before uh, when I uh, a few years ago,、um, uh, my wife and I、uh, traveled to New Zealand and as a as a tourist, and then、uh, we we found this place is quite、uh, attractive, and uh, uh, and then my wife and I thought, is that possible that we just、uh, 
come to New Zealand and uh, live here, live and work here. And uh, yeah, and a few, uh, like two years, uh, uh, more than two years ago, we found there is a, uh, there is a uh, kind of visa set uh, named uh, Silver Firm Job Searching Visa, which could uh, could uh, provide it to to the people uh, qualified and uh, with uh, can search for skilled uh, skilled job. And uh, uh, my at that time my, my job title was uh, multimedia uh, designer, which was uh, in in that list. And I said, why why don't we just give it a try and just apply it because it's quite hard to apply uh, this mm. kind of visa but uh, we, was, we were very lucky that we, we got one and then uh, uh, it's co- uh, and then uh, we, we just said let's let's be bold and let's just just do it okay and, wow. <laughs> and then we, we moved here uh, I found it's, it's harder than we thought <laughs> after we yeah. moved, moved to a new country because it's totally yeah. everything's new all the control and uh, all, uh, new city, new uh, everything is new. So we have to uh, learn all the things from from the very beginning. And uh, but oh, I'm so luck. I was so lucky that I found uh, find a job soon after we arrived. And then um, my wife was pregnant at that time. And then we have uh, our daughter born here in New Zealand. So wow. yeah, it's like. Uh, Quite lucky. So, so now. Congratulations! That sounds really fantastic. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. So you we really well. S- uh, settle down here, but still, uh, I think uh, after, I think after Christmas, I uh, will trying to, to look for a uh, UX related job here, because yeah. um, uh, now uh, because my company switched their uh, a strategy, so a strategy, so I'm more involved uh, as a marketing role in, in my current mm. current uh, company current position yeah. which I think I could uh, refocus refocus on UX design uh, which yeah. is my uh, my passion belongs to so yeah so yeah it's um, um, uh, I'll keep looking for 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 positions later but so but it's also uh, there 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 is a big gap nearly t- more than two years I didn't do uh, UX related job, so sure. it could be could be a little hard for that for me to 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 find a new job here. And also, uh, as we speak about this, uh, uh, another question for me uh, is uh, is that um, do you have any suggestion uh, for for someone who'd like to start a career in UX field? Not uh, pers- not just for me, but I think. Maybe for uh, some uh, like like college student or uh, or someone want to switch his uh, his or her career to uh, to to this field. Do do you have any suggestion? Yeah. Um, so I, I think switching to UX as a career is it's not. I'm not going to say it's easy because I mean switching careers is is never easy, but yeah. it's certainly it's certainly doable. It's achievable, and I think. Um, you really can learn a lot of the skills, and you can learn by doing. I think you can you can get a lot of experience um, actually doing this stuff. Mm. Um, so you know, there's there's sort of a natural learning process that's built into design thinking anyway, which is mm-hmm. talking to people, testing prototypes, iterating those prototypes, and I think ju- just doing the work of a UX person will will skill you up mm-hmm. pretty quickly. Mm. I would also say that you know when I look at CVs, people are applying, you know, with, with their resume of a CV. I don't always care if the stuff is real projects, if you know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. If, mm-hmm. if it's something they've done speculatively, right? So if they've yeah. said, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna redesign the HSBC banking app," mm-hmm. and they've done a load of screens for it, they've done the methodology, they've done the, you know, the personas and the journeys, and they've they've done a good job of it, mm-hmm. then. It doesn't matter to me that they weren't paid to do that. You know, that's that's irrelevant. Mm. I think you, you you can build a portfolio relatively quickly by by doing speculative stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and also, like I said before, um, I think a lot of it is empathy. A lot of it is 
empathy and objectivity. It's, it's those kinds of things. Hmm. Um, one last thing I would say is you, you have to use a lot of software. <laughs> I think yeah. it sounds really obvious, but hmm. you know you should be installing the latest iOS or installing the latest Android hmm. and getting the newest apps and going on product hunt, trying all these things because you need to be exposed to what the trends are in product design, interface design, and you know, the more stuff you see, the more kind of gets absorbed into your into your brain, and, um, and that helps. Yeah. And, and how how do you think about the future of UX design? Because uh, there are a lot of trendings, and in technology world, everything's changing so fast. So yeah. Uh, how do you think uh, maybe in five years or ten years? Oh. Uh, uh, what will it become, and yeah. uh, and so so, how do you think of that? Yep. Um, yeah, I think uh, I don't know really. Uh, so there's a, there's a few things that, that are happening, and um, I, I think the sort of fundamentals of UX will probably remain the same. So mm. w we're still going to have to make things simple or discoverable or possible you know we're still going to have to cl classify yeah. interactions and make them usable but i think that the mediums that we do things through are going to change i think augmented reality vr and chat things are, are going to get bigger and bigger and, and and they pose really interesting ux challenges mm. uh, i i would also say that it only has it only has like a special name until it becomes mainstream mm -hmm. like um it's called augmented reality, right? But then, yeah. what Snapchat do with filters that you know turn you into a dog or whatever? That's that is augmented reality, right? That already exists, and people have stopped calling it that. And I think AI will stop being called AI because it will just be normal. It'll be just part of the product. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I think so, something like chatbots and uh, and the kind of voice interfaces, I think, are really interesting. So. Alexa and Siri and um, whatever the other one is, uh, Google Home, right? They, yeah, those yeah. ones. Mm. They they're a really interesting situation because it used to be that if you wanted to order cat food or you know something for your home, you'd have to go to Google or go to Amazon, search for it, and yeah. decide which one. You know, use a visual interface. But mm. but now you're saying Alexa, order me cat food, and you know, you don't see which cat food you're ordering. It just appears at your house. Yeah, um, that's right. hmm. So yeah, there are a lot of different new UX considerations there, but I, I think it will it will all shake out over time. I don't think there's anything that's going to be a huge shift. I think it'll be quite gradual. Um, but it's still being used by humans, right? At the yeah. end of the day, it's still going to be an actual human using it. So those factors won't change. Yeah, that's. Totally agree, because um, um, uh, I I used to uh, think you uh, user design or user experience design just uh, as a visual part, like uh, uh, UI design. Uh, yeah. But then uh, the great example you, you mentioned about uh, Alexa or Google Home or Siri, it's also a good example of you. Uh, UX design, but not related to graphic, to to to, to visual. It's it's mm. things like uh, uh, it's it's definitely a user experience, but it's not. Uh, we we didn't see it. We we don't see it. We just uh, by speak and by listen. So it's yeah. yeah it's totally a new new field or uh, a new kind of way. But it's the fundamentally it's about people. Uh, met uh, people meet technology, so uh, yeah. these things could be uh, could be not change in, in in a few years. I think, yeah, like yeah. people's yeah. psychology is it's quite stable for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's quite good. Let's talk th something about your book because um, that's the that's the very reason. That's the first reason why we. <laughs> We start this conversation, and why uh, yeah. when when we connect to each other. So, uh, uh, so, uh, why did you read the, a book about uh, about UX principles? Because there are, uh, yeah, uh, uh, probably it's good to uh, for you to to start this this topic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. So, 
why did I write the book? I wrote, I wrote the book because um, I realised that quite a lot of stuff had sort of got um, compiled in my brain into a big blob. I didn't really, I didn't really know how to kind of unpick mm. it all into mm. sort of principles and lessons. And I realised that when I was designing stuff, I was following the same rules again and again. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I wasn't. I, I was just just going through these principles, and uh, you know, I googled around and looked on Amazon, and there didn't seem to be like um, an opinionated book. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I mean, opinionated kind of in the in the software sense. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there is just a certain way of doing things, and these are just opinions and they're principles that you could disagree with, but that's and that's fine. But if you don't want, if you just want a shortcut to doing these things, then they're all there and I think that was that was what I wanted to build and uh, what, what I wanted to write and when you look at what's out there there, there isn't really there wasn't really another book like that you know there there are, there are sort of classics like um, Steve Krug's Don't Make Me Think from yeah, you know yeah. a decade ago or whatever I and mean, that's a great book um, and I wanted to build something in the sort of kind of legacy of that really mm-hmm. but actually turn it into defined principles so you can just look up you know email input how do we do that or pagination how do we do that and, and just look at what I what I think the best practice is for that and yeah um, yeah so it's kind of a reference it's more of a reference guide I guess um, mm. I mean, you can read the whole thing all the way through but it's it, I guess it's for dipping in and out of yeah that's, um, yeah. Mm, that's um, uh, when, I, when I read your book I, I really uh, found it's so practical you know it's so uh, so good to to adapt some of the principles Immediately to to your current yeah. projects, and um, because I I've read some other book more about theory, like yeah, yeah. Uh, like don't make me think or the design of everyday things by Don Norman. Yeah. So uh, th- uh, those are great books to build the whole picture, uh, the structure uh, in your mind about what uh, what do we do about design. But uh, when you really need something. That you can uh, that you can uh, take immediately. I think your book is quite practical. You know, it's quite yeah. uh, quite very helpful. So, and um, and how how did you how did you write it? How how long it takes? And what uh, kind of tools do you use or steps? Uh, did did you do I, some user research or something like that? <laughs> yeah. So I, I wrote it. Um, it took me about a year to write. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was there was a bit of research. So I, I did talk to a lot of UX colleagues about the kind of book that they wanted, and mm-hmm. um, there, there was there's obviously sort of UX kind of veterans, professionals who've been around for years, mm-hmm. and then there's beginners and new entries to the sort of field. And I wanted one that would kind of help both. You know, if mm-hmm. if you're new, it's kind of a shortcut to you know a lot of trial and error that I've done over the years. You can kind of skip that and just go to the go to the solution, which is quite good. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also for for more sort of seasoned professionals, it's kind of prompts you to rethink how you think about stuff. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure lots of UX people wouldn't agree with with everything in the book, and that's kind of part of the point, really. Mm-hmm. They, can, they, they can find it you know, provocative and disagree with it, and, and that's fine. So, so yeah, there was research, and then writing it um, was very much like a software project, actually. You know, um, mm. a big spreadsheet with candidate chapters in, and then they were all moved around like a like a like a board. Like a, Kanban board almost, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then uh, use Google Docs because it lets you, um, you know, track changes and collaborate. And I had I had technical reviewers who helped me um, mm. review the book for sort of technical accuracy and things. So there was there was quite a quite a few people involved in the sort of production team side of it, mm. uh, and then a lot of illustration and artwork. And yeah, it took it took twelve months. I mean, obviously not not full time. I still have other stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I have a I have a young son who's um, seven years old. So. Looking after my my son was important, obviously, and yeah. uh, and also working. Yeah, exactly, working mm. projects and you know, doing jobs and stuff. But um, but yeah, part time. It took me it took me about twelve months to write. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with the result. You know, um, got, we got some spelling mistakes in there, but um, apart from that, we're uh, we're good. The um, <laughs> the software the software that the publishers use. Seems mm. to have some sort of glitches where it kind of drops ah. random characters out because um, yeah, yeah. I've been going back to the actual like um, masters and checking like surely I did, surely I didn't spell that word wrong and then I go back and it's like no I spelled that right so 
How, how did that happen? So that's that's been a bit frustrating, but you know, I think that's just yes. that's software for you, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, that's a very good example you you mentioned about the business software <laughs> or yeah or professional software or we yeah. use, but it's also need to be improve their user experience. Well, because I <laughs> I always thought it was like um, a big Word document or a or a Google Doc, but it's not. It's it's like a, it's almost it's more like a database. Oh, yeah, um, right. so that it, and it generates all the PDF files, it generates the ebook and all those things, and yeah, some some glitches in that software, and suddenly you've uh, got a lot of problems in your book, which is mm. quite quite frustrating. There you go. Mm. So do do you get some uh, interesting or funny uh, feedbacks from your readers or from from some some uh, some I, some people? Yeah. yeah, I've had. So, I mean. I think it's got a bit of a selection bias to it because I, I've heard really nice things, right? So lot, uh, lots of people have got back to me with really nice feedback and nice messages, and I've, I've really, really been like cheered by it all. It's been great, but I, I guess people who don't like it probably don't want to write to me. <laughs> so it's kind of it's self-selects, doesn't it? So you only yeah, get people who, right. who like the book writing to you, yeah. which is great. I like that. Um, so there's um, a lady called um, Elizabeth Churchill, and she's She's chair of the American Computer Society, and she's VP of Design for Google. So she's actually on the board at Google, mm -hmm. um, and she wrote some really nice words about the book, which I'm going to turn into an actual review. I think. Wow. Um, just wait. I'm waiting for her to like sign off and say, yeah, that's okay. But she wrote some really kind things about it, and it just means a lot to me that someone pretty. Uh, wow, so you must be feeling right so thing. so happy when you yeah when, as a re as an author when you when you read his. Uh, her 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 feedback, yeah. Yeah, really really fulfilling, definitely. Mm, yeah. So Great. Uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of books, um, do do you have any recommendation recom on on uh, on this field on UX field? If uh, someone uh, get uh, would like to learn more about user experience, uh, do you have yeah. any recommendation like a book um, list? Yeah. Obviously, my book, 101 UX Principles, mm -hmm. yeah, available definitely. now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, Don Norman, uh, we talked about him already, so the yeah. Don Norman book, Sign of Everyday Things, is great, and Steve Krug book. I think um, those are all sort of classics, uh, and Jakob Nielsen, uh, Jakob Nielsen's got a load of essays on his website that are all fantastic. Mm -hmm. But those are all kind of quite old school sort of theory books, and they're great, but I think if you, if you get a sort of modern Era, I think um, there is uh, inspired uh, by Marty Kagan, yeah. which is inspired. a really good product book. Yeah, mm. um, and then there's one called uh, Hooked by Nia Eyal, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's about habit forming products, mm -hmm. and it, it's not as sinister as you think. It's not it's it's not necessarily saying we should build products that hook people and make them addicted. It's not saying that at all, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really about the psychology of how that works. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, there's a lot that designers can learn from that mm. while, while still being ethical, you know, while still building good products. I think there's, a, there's some really good stuff in that book. So I definitely have a look at those two. They're both good. Mm. Wow. Those are great books to read. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I will, I will add all the book uh, book oh, description yeah. later in the in the sh uh, in the show notes later in this. Oh, podcast. great! Yeah, mm. thank you. And um, so, uh, first we already took uh, more than more than uh, nearly one hour. So yeah, it's it's quite yeah. yeah I've got to go soon. Yeah, it's quite a good chat, and I've really learned a lot. And I would like to say thank you again for. You're accepting my invitation here and share all your insights and uh, and uh, what you think about uh, UX design. I, and I think uh, and I think a lot of people uh, who listen to this podcast will uh, feel very happy. Uh, will uh, will learn a lot, same as my, same as I, uh, just just from from your insights. So great, thank you very much, real. And one uh, last, thank you. yeah, one last question. Uh, if some people want to reach out to you, how could they find you? Um, I am on Twitter um, mm -hmm. at uh, wgx. So it's just it's just three characters. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my Twitter handle. So 
yeah, you can at me on Twitter um, or DM me, and uh, yeah, definitely that'd be great. Mm. Thank you so much for having me. I've really, I've really enjoyed chatting with you, and um, it's been great to talk to you, Bear. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, me too. Hope we can talk something, uh, something about UX design or something else later. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, and hope you have a, uh, hope you have a great day here uh, in uh, Lisbon, right? <laughs> you are in Lisbon. Yeah, Lisbon. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, Will. Thanks, Bear. Take care of yourself. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. 本期节目由高效阅读课程赞助播出。阅读没有用了，这是这个时代关于阅读的一个最大谎言。恰恰相反，在信息时代呢，阅读书籍的能力正变得前所未有的重要。那些领先的成功者们，不论是西方的杰弗里·贝索斯、马克·扎克伯格、埃伦·马斯克、沃伦·巴菲特、比尔·盖茨，还是国内的马云、王石等等行业领袖们。都是通过大量阅读书籍来获取有效知识和信息的学习者，在这个时代 ，leaders are readers， 领导者都是阅读者。大狗熊我呢，在六年前隐约意识到了这个关于阅读的真相，并且投入了大量的时间和精力来锻炼自己的阅读能力和技巧，也陆续在节目里分享了很多具体的读书感受。但我发现啊，更值得分享的呢，是我这套独创的高效阅读方法。所以呢，我将自己的阅读经验和方法呢，历时几个月整理为这门高效阅读的精华专题课程。这门课程一共包含十二节，每一节呢会针对性的讨论一个关于阅读的问题。学习完之后呢，你可以做到一年阅读一百本优质的非虚构类书籍，并且培养起适合自己的阅读习惯与输出应用的技巧，成为学习上的超人。一年一百本书，这个听起来好像很恐怖，但只要按照课程里所教授的方法，一步一步去做，是完全可以做到的。大狗熊，我在六月到八月这三个月里呢，同时在制作课程，也在上班工作，然后还要带小孩然后还要做播客的节目等等，每天只有很有限的阅读的时间，但即便这样，三个月的时间呢，也阅读了三十多本书。所以这套方法有难度，也有挑战。你想轻松找速成的话，就请走开；但一旦掌握的话，它将随着时间的增加而变得越来越熟练。越早学会高效阅读呢，你就越早能从阅读中收益。马上登录高效阅读的官网 ：readwithbear com，read r e a d with w i t h bear b e a r com。或者呢，关注微信公众号“狗熊有话说”，可以查看详情。每张课程的第一节呢，都可以免费的观看。“狗熊有话说”的听友都有五元的优惠券赠送，在“狗熊有话说”这个公众号啊，这个公众号里面呢，回复“高效阅读”就可以领取优惠券。高效阅读，想学习、想提升、想成长的你，值得来加入。